Uh, now I have the opportunity to announce uh, today's speaker. He's the Shawnee County Election Commissioner. A lot of us know him and he knows a lot of us because the League of Women Voters, uh, even statewide, has worked with election offices across the state. And we can barely have a meeting on election day because everybody goes to work for you instead of coming to our meetings. So there you go. Um, he was uh, appointed by uh, Secretary of State Chris Kobach in 2012. Uh, before that, he lived in Southeast Kansas, had been a representative, representative of Bourbon and Lynn counties. He's been reappointed three other times, including the last time in 2022. Um, oh, he served five terms in the Kansas House. Uh, he and his wife, Stacy, have two children. So uh, help me welcome our speaker, um, Andrew Howell. Thank you for that introduction. Um, pleasantly surprised you've got a crowd here. This is kind of fun. Uh, I do see a lot of familiar faces. I do want to say thank you to each of you that do help with elections. Um, we, uh, we're very lucky, I feel like, in Shawnee County. We have a lot of engaged citizens. Our turnout is very high compared to many places across the state. People here, I believe, locally are very interested in elections and in how things are done and in processes. So I just want to say thank you to each of uh, to each of you uh, for, first of all, your interest, your engagement, and your willingness to help us out in elections. Uh, I see a couple of faces in here I've called on more than one time when we needed people in a hurry. And so it is it is important to have those friends that care, friends that are actually there and actually can get all, can pick up the phone and make things happen. So. Thank you for each of you that have helped us get that done. Um, I, I, we've got a handout and I think we're getting a few extras uh, printed. I wanted to go over, I wanted to just do a real quick rundown of uh, what's coming up in 23. So I've got a 23 primary and general election calendar. You'll notice we've got what we call our race list that shows all the different offices that are coming up. Uh, for this election in 23, and then on the last day, uh, on the last sheet that we've handed out, um, we're showing all the different school districts that will be on the ballot, and we'll talk about that here in just a second a little bit more. So again, like I said, thank you all for your interest and for being willing to help make elections happen. Um, happy to answer your questions today, too. I, quite frankly, one of the things I like the most about talking to people uh, and giving these presentations you all right? Okay. <laughs> One of the things I like the most is just to hear questions and to, and to understand what people are thinking um, and what your concerns are. So we'll have a chance to visit, I'm sure, here shortly about that as well. So um, let's talk about what's going to happen on the ballot just a little bit in 23 and then what it takes to, to spark a primary. Remember, a, a primary is sparked in a school district. Uh, or even in a city race, uh, when four people file for that office. So it's difficult at times for me to predict or tell people, will there be a primary in 2023? The answer is I really don't know because it's, it's driven by how many people walk in the door and file for each office. And so we don't have a primary until four people have filed for a school district seat or any of the city uh, offices that are on, on the ballot. So we may or may not have an August primary. It may or may not be, it most likely will not be countywide because it's very, very rare. I don't know that I've ever seen uh, that every school district has a primary. In fact, it's, it's unusual enough that I have to actually communicate with school districts when we do have that because then they're obligated by law to pay for that primary election. And a lot of them, it's so rare that they really don't know that sometimes. So. That's one of the things that we're trying to get better at communicating uh, for school districts is just to prepare for that uh, at the budget level. So let's talk about kind of some of the things that will happen as we go through this primary this year. Um, we will have a filing deadline of June 1 at noon in our office for anybody that wants to run for a city or school uh, race. Um, 
And again, there's no, there's nothing magical about that. That's just a statutory deadline. And then we'll post everybody that's filed on our website. I will tell you one of the things the office is pretty excited about is uh, the county has spent quite a bit of time and effort the last few years uh, working at building an election management system for us. And I think has finally decided that we just need to, that we need to work with other vendors because it's very complicated staying on top of the statutes and the processes for them. Um, so we're excited. We're actually working with the vendor right now to build a system that we think will make um, some of our presentation of this information on the web much easier to understand, hopefully, uh, as well as help us do a better job of keeping track of our election workers. As you can imagine, keeping track of almost 800 election workers, those that start, those that stop, those that join, those that need training, uh, and then communicating out of 94 polling places, places across the county, communicating uh, where they need to be, when they need to be, you know, what they're responsible for exactly is a challenge. So we're excited about uh, the county has, I, I do want to stop and brag for a second on our county commissioners. I really feel very lucky here, to be honest with you. They, they take it seriously, they fund it uh, adequately, and I think they give us the support that we need to do a good job. That's, that's my opinion. Uh, there are other places in the state that I think Either, either it's just more difficult for some other set of reasons, but I'm, I do want to give a, a small, I guess, shout out to our county commissioners for, for doing a good job of not only funding the office, uh, but helping us be, I think, effective and successful at having good people that work with us throughout the entire process. So I think that matters, and sometimes that gets overlooked as well. Um, I guess schedule wise for a primary, if there's a primary, a couple of key dates to remember, and we'll go over that sheet here after a while. Last day to register if, to, to vote um, in the primary, if there is one, it will be July 11th. So registration activities, of course, can occur uh, at any time um, until July 11th this year. Remember, voters have until 5 p.m. to bring the registration to the office or 11.59 p.m. if it's uh, if they want to, to uh, register online. So one of the things that I might remind folks, and we will be updating this, but we have a number of registration outposts throughout the county. Um, there are a number of banks that actually have registration cards. People can actually request them as they're going through uh, the drive through we have those listed. I think we, I think we're close to 40 outpost locations throughout the county. Um, so just a reminder, that list is on our website. You're welcome to direct people or encourage people to, to use any of those locations. Um, we also every year verify not only the locations because those change quite a bit more than they used to uh, as different branches come and go. Uh, we spend quite a bit of time verifying hours of operation and locations that are available and open for people to, to if they want to grab a, a hard card, registration card in their neighborhood, we've tried to make that as convenient as we can. Uh, like I said, we've got over 40 locations, and it's a little bit of work, actually, because one of the challenges of a registration outpost, of course, is that you have to train people because there's a little bit to pay attention to. One of my concerns has always been with our outpost locations, training people so that they're actually paying attention to signatures and citizenship and all the things that people have to mark perfectly uh, in order for that to be processed. So we do the best that we can at it. Uh, and then if, if for some reason we see something's not quite right, we do what we always do, pick up the phone, call them, send them a letter, do what we have to do to get back in touch with that person. But I really we do put a lot of time and emphasis into trying to make sure it gets handled correctly in the first place. One of the things um, that I think we are going to continue to try to make sure people know about, I know the league does a good job of talking about this, but I would encourage you to make sure people understand not only their mail ballot or their election day options, but also their ability to come vote in the office early. I know most people that have experienced that in Shawnee County are pretty happy with it. We try to make it a quick, uh, effective process. Um, the, the rule of thumb is it starts two weeks before election day. Um, and in even numbered years, as a matter of uh, practice, we do it between 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. 
Um, and that's just historically, there is just not enough traffic to run it any later than that. Uh, we ran it several years early on till 8 p.m. And I think we had one voter between 7 and 8 p.m. So it just wasn't worth it. And then in the, in the odd years, which is when we have our city and school elections, we go from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And it's very similar. We've, 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 we've actually tracked when we were open longer than that. And there just isn't enough traffic to be worth uh, the expense. So we try to keep the time frames as similar as we can. Um, and we try to make sure that we communicate with people so that they know they can vote. If they work till five, they've still got till six uh, to vote in the office if they choose to. The other thing that I like to really emphasize is that people have three ways to vote. They can vote by mail if they fill out their application. They can vote in person if they come into the office at 3420 Southwest Van Buren, or they can vote at their polling place election day. So I think it's important that people know all of those options are available. And we've really worked at trying to make that message easier to understand because I'm always surprised how many people in the community don't fully understand all three of those options and how they work. So uh, as you may have noticed, I've spent a lot more time on television in the last year or so, just trying to communicate about those things. Cause I think one of our op bigger obligations is really to make sure that people understand their options and how they work and get their questions answered. So, um, so that's one of our, one of our pushes in that regard. Um, this year, it will start at 8 a.m. It will end at 6 p.m. weekdays, uh, and that will begin July 17th, assuming that, again, that we have a primary, which we won't know until we will know if we have a primary on June the 1st, because that will be the deadline at noon at which we know if more than three people have filed for any office. Also, please spread the word uh, as best you can about the fact that our office, like every office in the state, is required to do public tests. Uh, of the election equipment. And we try to publicize that. Um, but I think it's important for people to know that in an age of conversation about the software having issues, that we are literally verifying all the different possibilities that exist within a machine and verifying that it is in fact counting as it's expected to, and that there are not anomalies within the system. So um, we do that uh, as a public event. I've had a few people on occasion attend it, but it is not, um, I would not call it a well attended event. And, I, and I'm somewhat okay with that because I guess at some level you could argue if people were truly concerned or really worried about it, they would all be there asking even harder questions and doing a lot more. So I guess I try to take the positive approach that that must mean people here are not too worried about it. I don't know, but I do think it's important for people to know that they can come see that. Um, that the law allows for that. And I like actually talking about what we're doing so people can see it as it happens. So please make sure people know that there is a public test before election day on every piece of machinery that office staff do. And then the people doing the test are not the same people that actually run the machines on election day. Um, and then there's actually a post test uh, after election day that is also done again to verify that the ballots and the machinery and the software all works as it's expected to. And I think it's important for people to appreciate that because I have people from time to time that come through the office and ask questions about it. Like, how do you know for sure um, that, that the software works as, ex as it's supposed to? I will tell you, I've spent quite a bit of time at our vendor's office in Omaha um, asking hard questions because I do worry about it. I do worry maybe there's maybe there is something i mean we don't know that for sure so i spend a lot of time working to make sure that i can explain how i know that it works correctly um and i take i take the question seriously i think we always have to take concerns from the public seriously so i spend a lot of time digging into various ways to know one of the things i learned recently that i did not know is that there is a document from the vendor that demonstrates how you can tell if the machine has a modem or does not have a modem. So I've verified all of our machines, in fact, do not have modems. Uh, I knew that they didn't because we ordered them specifically without modems because state law doesn't allow that. But a lot of people don't know that. So it's good to know that there are additional ways to verify that a modem is not included in the system. Um, so let's talk for a second about um, if we, 
if we have a if we have a primary or do not, um, we really won't know. Like I said, until until June one. General election dates to remember, and I'll just go over these briefly. Remember, the last day to register for the general election is October seventeenth. Uh, voters will have until 5 p.m. to bring their registration to the office and vote in person or uh, 1159 if it's online. And again, remember our registration outposts are also an option for folks. We'll have those available. Same, same. we'll, we'll triple check our, our information on the web again to make sure that a location has changed, that we've got that updated. Um, same thing on early in-person voting in the office. In the general election, it starts at 8 and will end at 6. Um, and that date will actually be October the 23rd. Uh, and voters who want to vote in person will just need a government-issued ID. Um, same thing. We're going to do the same tests, both before and after. And then remember, a couple of years ago, the law changed, which also requires us to do an audit of um precincts and races on the ballot uh, before canvas so we don't select those those are randomly selected um and there's actually a public draw that you're welcome to attend if you want to see how they get selected and then we have to go in and look at uh, specific ballots from a specific precinct uh, and specific races on those ballots and then we have to verify that the count that we told everybody on election night matches exactly what's in that ballot box uh, on those ballots. So it's an additional layer of uh, just verification. And then we, if there's a discrepancy, we're required by law to let the county commission know about that at the Canvas event. So far, we have not seen that. I, I will tell you one of the most, probably one of the most interesting things uh, about verifying that ballots count correctly happened to us as one of the nine counties that was asked to do um, a full recount of every ballot cast um, for the question on the ballot uh, that happened last November. It was almost 65,000 ballots. And at the end, at the, the numbers came out exactly. I think there was a differential of 19 votes. Um, but, but as a way of understanding how that could even happen, that was really, by and large, a failure of voters to follow instructions on paper ballots. There were 19 cases of people either circling rather than filling in an oval. And because the law requires election workers to, um, to try to understand what the will or the intent, a voter intent uh, was, then they were made an adjustment on those 19 for the intent of the voter, even though the machine didn't pick it up. So it can happen, but out of almost 65,000 ballots, a change of 19, again, for voter intent issues is not shocking at all. It's very, very small. Uh, and, it, and I think that adequately demonstrates it will be rare for a voter intent type issue to change the outcome of a race. So um, I think you've all, have you all had a chance to see our, our race list that shows the different races that will be on the ballot? Hopefully that's helpful to you. Some of those school districts are actually not uh, are out of, I would call them out of county school districts. Um, USD 330 is not headquartered in Shawnee County, but there will be a few voters uh, on the outer edges of the county that will see those races on their ballots for those parts of the county that have that school district. So we've tried to include all of the different school districts and you'll notice on some of these, if it's an out of county school district, it actually says candidate wishing to file must file in the other county. Uh, so we're not the home county for those races, but we do have a few of them on, on the ballot in a few locations throughout the county. So just some of the complexities uh, with those boundaries that come across the line. And then we have you know city offices, um, Topeka plus the other four. And then of course, Sherwood Improvement, uh, district will be on the general election only. And I believe the way that race is, it's the top three vote getters uh, that are elected. Um, and I think we've kind of talked a little bit about the 2023 general primary and general calendar. I think most of you have seen that. So I probably won't spend a lot of time on that. And then we just got a little explainer about school board elections. Um, 
again, these are all school districts in Shawnee County, although we're not necessarily the home county um, that people can either run for if you live within the district or you can uh, at least watch the race if you're interested. 372, which is Silver Lake, is slightly different in that uh, each of, because of the type of election uh, that they have chose to run in that school district, you have to have uh, that your every member will run district wide. So that's a little bit different than all the other school districts uh, that we have in Shawnee County. So it actually takes, I believe, uh, 13 candidates have to file in order to cause a primary because of the way that works. Remember, in school districts, I think it's kind of it's it's a little difficult to explain, and we're going to work at doing a better job of visiting with school districts about this, like I said, for primaries. In every other school district in the county, you have member districts, and they're typically like an A1, B2, and C3 uh, that will be on the ballot. And uh, each of those are actually separate districts that cover a different piece of territory. And the only time, though, that you will be voting for those people in their specific little area would be if there is a primary and four people run. Otherwise, you'll be voting on each of those people district-wide in the general election. So that's a little different, a little hard to explain to people. I know we had in 345, I believe there was an election in 2021 at which four people filed. And there was a little bit of confusion among the public as to where they had to live to vote in that particular primary. So. We're gonna, we're gonna be working at helping people understand where you need to live and maybe doing a better job on our website, hopefully with maps, uh, should we have that this time. Um, let me go over just a couple of other things briefly and then I probably can tell there's at least 10 questions in the audience. So we'll probably, we'll probably go into Q and A here shortly. Um, Again, just to emphasize, please remind people that they have, I think it's important that people understand, while we all may prefer one particular option for ourselves, I really want the public to know they can vote in person at the office two weeks prior to election day. They can request a mail ballot. You can request a mail ballot two months early, it's fine. We don't care exactly when you send the application and encourage them to do that if they want to. Um, but they just need to make sure they get it into us. You know, at about two weeks out is when I recommend people send their uh, their because we're gonna. That's when we're gonna be we're gonna be mailing out that Wednesday. It's just over two weeks ahead, I believe, that we mail out all those ballots. So if people have a mail ballot, they really need to work at uh, getting that back to us as quickly as possible. One of my bigger worries with mail ballots is just. I would guesstimate that some fraction uh, of ballots don't get through the mail system. It does happen. So, uh, in fact, I think we got one ballot back from the election in the last couple of weeks. I remember seeing one that came back and you always wonder to yourself, it's months later, where did, where has that thing been? Did somebody, you know, forget to drop it in the mail and finally did, or did it, did it fall off a sorter somewhere and somebody picked it up on the floor? I don't know. I always wonder. Um, but just, I guess, encourage people to get that back as quickly as possible to us once they've been mailed out, because that's probably my bigger worry is not being able to communicate with the right set of people timely enough, or maybe if they didn't give us a phone number, those kinds of things, it can be a little bit tricky to, to communicate with them. And then finally, election day, a lot of people really like their election day option, and that's how they want to vote. So I guess just reminding people. Um, that those are the three different options. And I encourage people to choose whichever one they think makes sense for them. And at different times, different options will make more sense. Um, if you've got to be out of town, um, sometimes mail makes sense. Sometimes voting early makes sense. It just depends on the situation. The other thing that Shawnee County has always done, uh, and I think it's, again, a tribute to our commissioners and just the way things have been done here for quite a while. We always pay the postage on ballots going back and forth for voters and not every county does that. Uh, so I think our commissioners should be uh, commended for being willing to do that. I think it's important that we respect the process and do what we can to help voters uh, in that regard. You know, the laws changed quite a bit in the last couple of years on transfer documents. So one of the security um, things that we've been paying a lot of attention to is making sure that anytime a ballot moves, 
Um, even with election workers, it's gotten to be a lot of paper and a lot of signing. Uh, but anytime a ballot moves or a ballot box moves or um, even we actually have gone so far just because I think we need to go the extra step to help people be confident. We actually require a sign in for receiving the ballots from our printer just to make sure that we can verify the total count. Uh, that we basically the entire election process really when you get right down to it is an accounting is a massive counting procedure. So we treat it that way. Uh, we have a lot of transfer documents that we have built because we think it's important that if we're ever in court or we're ever asked to produce them, that we have them available. Um, so that transfer documents issue has taken a lot of time the last couple of years, but I think it's important. Anything we can do to give people additional confidence that we're paying attention to our processes. 